Welcome to Santiago Surplus. In the last video on the Ruger SP-101, we did the hammer strut, including a reduced hammer, uh, hammer spring, reduced power, and polishing the bearing surface. So now we're going to work on the hammer. There's an important part about the hammer that we're going to have to look at first that has to do with a later step in the project. And that is figuring out how much wiggle there is. You can see the hammer wiggle back and forth. Okay, to make things go more evenly, more smoothly, more unidirectionally, we're going to shim the hammer. What you have to know is how much to shim the hammer. There are some excellent videos on this if you want to look at other sources besides myself. Um, if you go to triggershims.com, Lance and Tammy Shively of triggershims.com or michigancenteroutdoors.com, they have an eBay store and a regular website, and they do an excellent job making multi-thickness shims. Shims are little, little washers that are extra thin. Okay, these are the ones for the hammer. And I've got 0 .004 inch dimensions up to 0 .009 inch dimensions. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the gap. I have a set of um, feeler gauges that I use specifically for this type of work. They don't get too big, they don't get too small, you know. They give me a pretty good uh, guideline. So this is a 0.11 or a 0 0.011. This is, let me get into the middle here because I like to start in the middle. Where's my point? This is a 0 0.007. Okay, so that's right there. And we're going to put another one in the other side. 0 0.011. Okay. We have some pretty serious gap going on here now, don't we? Now I'm going to add a little bit. 0 0.005. 0 0.005 is not going to easily fit. Okay. I just about get it there. Let's try a point zero zero four. Point zero zero four looks like where we're at. Okay, so if I double check my work, if I have a point zero one one on this side, and I put a zero. Hang on, let me find my stuff. Zero one two on this side. See? This is why you check your work. That is slightly larger than stacking a 0, 0, 004 and a 0, 0, 007. Okay, right now we're at 012 and 011. One. But I have a 0, 0, 0015, which is really thin, and that's not going to go in without significant binding. So we're going to take these two numbers together, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 2. That makes 0 0.023, okay? We're going to subtract point, uh, 0, 0, 0.002, I believe. I'm going to have to look that up before we get to that stage, okay? And then divide it in half, and then that's going to be the size of our washers, all right? Uh, right now, we're just going to write down the number I came up with, point. 0, 2, 3 as my total. That is my total gap. And again, because people don't like to be confused about what's happening in the future, that gap is going to be shimmed with washers at a later point in time. Right now, we're going to move on to disassembly and polishing. Always clean up your mess, keep your tools organized, and it will keep you from losing your shit. Now, holding the trigger back all the way 
rotate it so that the cylinder release side is up and your hammer pin should fall right out, okay? The hammer pin is not something that we're going to deal with a lot. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to look at the bearing surface, but we're not even going to polish it. This is one of those things where you really don't want to take off any material and even a polish job will probably take off too much. These, this is one of those things that's just going to wear in. Remove your hammer, release your trigger, put the rest of the firearm off to the side. Okay, the hammer has a couple of components to it. <clears throat> Noting that the hammer pin is not something we're going to deal with. The washers for the, the shim washers are going to go right here. This is your hammer dog. There's a spring in there. And we don't want the spring to fall out. Okay, hammer dog. Hold it. I would normally do this in a bag, but we're not going to this time. I need a smaller pin. Pin out. There's my pin. Dog. And then I can tap out the plunger and the plunger spring. There's a hole it goes in. Okay. I'm not going to mess with this. Now your hammer. So here we have all the pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Five pieces. Okay. These two you're just going to leave alone. Your hammer sear is this surface right here. Okay. That one you want to polish. Okay. No sand, honestly, at this point, um, in skill level and the process, no stone. Literally just going to polish, okay? The bottom side of the hammer dog, right here, okay? It sits like this, and that bottom surface, you can polish that also. Again, you do not want to change the angles or actually remove material. Just a light polish. Um, probably not even going to film it this time. I'm just going to take just the green wheel. I'm just going to lightly, very, very lightly polish. Okay. And now we have a couple of polished parts. You can see the shiny. I don't know if you can see that there's still a little scratch in there. It's, it's a material. It's a piece of material. You don't want to take that down till the scratch is gone because we're not dealing with a visual, we're dealing with smoothness of the action. That would take a lot too much material off. And in the hammer dog, we have just polished. You can still see some of the lines in there. Not a big deal. I'm gonna wipe them off. So normally what you would do at this point in time, uh, if you're being a reasonable person, is you would take this opportunity. Let me back out a little bit to test your trigger engagement. So I'm putting a little bit of grease on the plunger spring, putting the plunger back in hammer dog. Now I did wipe everything off so there's no polishing compound left in there. Push the dog back in. I'm trying to do this where you can see it which makes it a little more difficult. Line up the hole and this is not like an AK this is a pin that just goes in. It just goes right in there and good to go. The next step, if you want to be conscientious, is going to be trigger back, 
hammer in, line it up. Note that we haven't done any shim work yet. Okay. We literally just put that in. Now, we're going to cock and we're going to push the hammer like we have a spring and then we're going to pull the trigger. What we're looking for is the slightest amount of positive engagement. And we have just a hair of positive uh, trigger geometry. Okay? And that's it. Again, you want to be very careful about pulling too much polish or over overdoing the job and uh, ending up with negative sear engagement. Okay? That's it. That's that. We are done with these parts for the moment. Next part is going to be removing the trigger group. Okay, as you'll recall from the initial introductory video, you're going to have to put a rod of some sort in here and press this button and then lift the trigger group out. If you have not done that before, it may be very hard to move and you may have to get in here, not anywhere here, but here and pry a little bit. Okay, on the left hand side, the side opposite your serial number, there is a significant space here. There's still a space on the other side, but on this side it seems like it's larger, where you can get something in there and pry just a little bit should you need to. However, you may not need to, and here, uh, push that spring-loaded plunger in. This is much easier for me with a different screwdriver or a punch. You can just use a punch. I just like the fat handles on a screwdriver. Now there are a lot of bearing surfaces here, so there's a lot of stuff you don't want to mess with, okay? You don't want to take this and polish it. You don't want to try to go for a chrome polish on anything disassembled. All right, we're just going to be working with the trigger group. Now the next video, we're going to deal with actually taking this part and doing the work. Hang tight.